Okay, well, welcome. Um, this is my first attempt at recording one of these. This is a desktop capture software that lets me narrate a, a PowerPoint presentation. So this is a PowerPoint uh, that I just came up with to discuss, I think, a pretty important concept in renewable energy systems. And it's called the concept of primary energy as opposed to site energy or end-use energy. So to, to get through this, um, I'm going to start with um, some other um, kind of a background or a view of units. And if you're, I don't know how good my microphone is, but you can hear my dog barking in the backyard. So you can see I'm sitting at home doing this. Um, so let's just review units and energy because it gets kind of confusing. It's worth spending some time talking about. So the SI unit for energy or for work, interchangeable words, energy and work, uh, is a joule. And it's, it's defined as the work done by one newton of force through one meter of displacement. Uh, and, and it turns out uh, that's a very small amount of energy, or small amount of work. Uh, the equivalent imperial unit uh, for this is a foot-pound. So again, it's a force of one pound force acting through one foot of displacement. Um, and it turns out that even though those are the, the fundamental units, they're not in general use. Um, you'll occasionally see kilojoules or megajoules, but, but generally speaking, those aren't the units we use when we're talking about energy. And then, of course, there's the rate of energy, right? DEDT, or E dot, is power, the rate at which energy is being transformed. Uh, one watt is energy at a rate of one joule per second. Um, and then, uh, and, and the important thing to remember is that that, use, that unit of watt actually has a time unit embedded in it, right? So one watt is one joule per second. And the reason I bring this up is because one of the most common mistakes I see used in, uh, it's used in particularly journalists because they, they like to report a lot on energy, is they make the mistake of saying things like, um, you know, 10 megawatts per year or a kilowatt per second or something like that. Unless you're talking about the rate of change of energy consumption, right? Uh, the rate of change of the rate of energy consumption, like a rate with, with the utilities might call it a ramp. This makes no sense. A power plant has a capacity of so many megawatts, and it's not megawatts per year. It's just the rate at which it can do it. It's how big the hose is coming out. It has nothing to do with it per year, per second. So that's a real pet peeve of mine. And just to muck it up further, um, when we want to talk about energy, the actual amount of energy, we, we take that rate unit and multiply it times the unit of time. So, so again, we're not talking about if, if we, we use the unit of the watt hour. Okay, and it's a one watt hour of energy is the amount of energy used in one hour if you're consuming at a rate of one watt or one joule per second. So one watt hour of energy is equivalent to 3,600 joules. So that gets back to what I said earlier, joules is a small unit. Watt is not a high power, it's not a high rate of energy. Uh, and so that little trickle, you know, a, a night light is seven watts, right? So. If you have a night light on for one hour, it uses seven watt hours of electricity, and that's seven times 3,600 joules. So you can see that the joule gets pretty bulky after a while. Um, and that watt hour is still a small unit, right? So we use the fundamental unit of electricity, uh, energy, electrical energy, is the kilowatt hour. Okay? And it's the amount of energy you'd use in one hour if it's consumed at a rate of 1,000 watts. Well, what's 1,000 watts? Well, it's a kilowatt. And it can be, um, you know, a microwave oven is usually somewhere between 900 and 1200 watts. So on average, close to a kilowatt. A hair dryer, a toaster, toaster oven, they're all about a kilowatt. So imagine any one of those on for an hour, you've used then a kilowatt hour of electricity. Here's an interesting conversion. A kilowatt hour is equivalent to 3,600,000 joules. Um, and a typical monthly residential electric bill might be somewhere between 800 and 1500 kilowatt hours, depending on the month. It could be higher, it could be lower. But that would mean a typical homeowner might be open. If we build in joules, if we use joules, we'd have to be using billions of joules and then use the, the SI prefixes for billion, which is what? Tera or something? That's not tera. Giga, right? Four gigajoules of electricity. Well, that's that would be hard to to get our hands around. So we don't do that. So um, here's an important point to realize that from a standpoint of physics, uh, one kind of energy is equivalent to another. In other words, if I mean, uh, thermal energy, mechanical energy, chemical energy, we can all transform them. So if a unit's good for, for 
uh, describing one form of energy, say electricity, it's also good for performing for looking at the other one, which is you know thermal or some other one. So by convention, we use it for electricity, but we don't have to. Uh, we can use it to describe the other form we often talk about, which is thermal energy or heat. Um, if I use kilowatt hour to represent thermal energy, I'll almost always or try to remember to use a subscript, TH, so kilowatt hour thermal. And then in that context, when I talk about kilowatt hour of electricity, I'll use KWH sub E for electricity. Um, but by and large, if we're talking about thermal energy, if we're talking about heat, we'll talk about the BTU, the British Thermal Unit. And a BTU is the amount of energy it takes to raise one pound mass of water one degree Fahrenheit. It also is a fairly small unit, though not quite as small as a, as a, a joule. A unit was created to discuss heat, but as I said before, it can use, like the kilowatt hour, can be used to describe thermal. A BTU can be used to describe electricity. Um, so th th just keep that in mind. But remember this conversion. This is how we go back and forth. A kilowatt hour of energy is the same as 3,412 British thermal units, or BTUs. And there is a pretty easy way to think about this. And think about an electric water heater. And imagine an electric water heater that has uh, a heating element that's rated at one kilowatt. So it will turn it on, it'll consume electricity at a rate of a kilowatt, and it, and it does a pretty good job of converting it. In fact, it converts it all to heat. So that's one kilowatt. It, it heats the water at a rate of a kilowatt, or at a rate of 3,412 BTUs. Um, right, so, so yeah, so BTUs per hour if, you, if you're looking at a rate. So a kilowatt hour of electricity, uh, through that kilowatt heater will generate 3,412 BTUs uh, of heat. Okay, so and I just put the slide up here because I wanted to, to kind of put all these in one place, right? A quad is a quadrillion BTU, which is 10 to the 15th BTUs. Um, and it's also just shy of 3 times 10 to the 11th kilowatt hours. So that's a pretty big unit. And it's and a quad is also um, one times ten to the sixth terajoules, or one times ten to the eighteenth joules. So uh, kind of so focuses how small the joule unit is for us. Okay, so that's kind of the background, and you know go back and refer back to those slides if you want, and and it kind of helps you keep the context. Let's look at the graph that we showed the first day of class. This is the sources and sector graphs. Uh, this was the 2010 data from the um, uh, Energy Information Administration, EIA, part of the Department of Energy. And you'll see here, what I want you to look at is uh, the electric power portion. It says 39.6 quads of energy uh, was used in the electric power sector. And, and the question I want you to grapple with is, does that mean it's 39.6 quads equivalent of electricity delivered, or is that 39.6 quads of thermal energy supplied to the power plants? And the answer to that question is the latter. In other words, we deal with, when we're looking at energy use in general, we deal with primary energy, which is the energy that goes to supply uh, the system. So it's the first source, the primary source. So, um, so there's a conversion factor if we want to look at how much, how many kilowatt hours of electricity came out. It's much smaller than that because so much of the electricity comes from thermal plants. Um, uh, you know, the actual kilowatt hours of electricity is much smaller. So, so primary energy is what we deal with when we're looking at this. Um, and so, so that 98 quads for the country uh, from 2010 that came from that um, report meant 20, 98 quads of primary energy. We also sometimes call that source energy. And the other side of this is the actual energy used is either site energy or end use energy. Okay. So sometimes we call source energy, site energy, or primary energy and end use energy. So here's the question. If you've got things like solar photovoltaics and wind turbines that can generate electricity directly from ambient energy sources where you don't have to go through fuels, so you don't have to go through a thermal process, um, how do you account for that? How do you put that in this context? Because there is no primary energy, right? It's just you, you just harvest the, the uh the energy and, and put it in. Um, and, and so we grappled with this. Okay, and, and, and here, here's the reason why we, we need to do it. If, if you were to look at that chart we had 
um, where we just go back a little bit. You see the renewable energy is 8 quads down here in the lower left hand side. Uh, yep, I can do this. Okay, 8 quads renewable. Um, but if we only looked at the electricity produced, it would actually wouldn't show us 8% of our total use. It would be less than 3%. Um, and, and that doesn't do a good job of letting us know how much fossil fuel we've displaced. Or, or, you know, its power, its value to us in society. So we want to, we need to grapple with this. We need to realize that when we use electricity from wind and solar, we've displaced much larger than the equivalent amount of fossil fuel because of the inefficiencies of the thermal plants. So this is the solution. We look at this as, a, as avoiding traditional fuel-based energy. So we account for the renewable energy by figuring out how much fossil fuel we would have used to make them that number of kilowatt hours. And that answer is the average heat rate of all fossil fuel generating stations in the country. So remember from our reading in chapter three, the heat rate of a power plant is BTUs per kilowatt hours generally. Okay, so we, every power plant operating country has to report that to the government and they average it out. And then that average out, that average, no, average heat rate, BTU per kilowatt hour, is then applied to the number of kilowatt hours generated by wind and solar, and then they back calculate the quads of fossil fuels that would have been used otherwise. Um, so, so remember this graphic. This was the uh, the one from um, Lawrence uh, Livermore Laboratories, uh, and notice that um, they do a much better job in this graph of accounting for those thermal losses. They actually uh, it shows up explicit in here. So this gray area here, the thermal, the conversion losses from all the electricity generated. So electric generation consumes, as our previous graph shows, and I think I reproduced it here, right? Yeah, 39.6 quads. Um, there's a slight different accounting here, so it's 39.5 here. Um, but they show that that only made 12.7 quads worth of electricity. The rest here, this 26, was rejected. Uh, mostly all in heat. And so if you look at these um, renewables, that's the yellow solar and then hydro, wind, and geothermal, and add them up, that ends up with a number that's right around three quads worth of, um, of renewables. Whereas again, let's look at this chart, they show eight quads. Right? Well, the difference is in here, in this setting, this is primary energy, the source energy, they took the amount of electricity generated by the renewables and applied that average heat rate number to say it's eight quads worth of fossil fuels that it displaced. And here we don't have to, to account for that. There are some losses shown here, and I, I think these are like conversion losses. This is probably it shows up in an inverter. Um, geothermal has some losses. Wind doesn't show any losses at all, so I'm not really sure. I'd have to dig down into this one. And, and they're do, they do a very good job, by the way. If you dig into any of these reports, you will find exactly uh, how they did it. Um, but you can now, from here, compute how much electricity that came to us, right, came to these uses, comes from solar, comes from wind, comes from geothermal generation, comes from hydro. So you can actually do that from this graph. So this one doesn't deal quite as much with um, uh, the, the source and, and uh, the primary energy uses there. Okay, so next one. So here's an exercise. So to kind of get some, get your head around this. And, I, and you know, it's, it's a subtle, but it's not really a terribly difficult concept. Um, let's, let's do some data mining. Let's go to the website and it's um, EIA.gov um, and, and hover the mouse. So, so go to that website. And, and when you hover the mouse over the the menu bar just below the top of the thing, there's there's several different things. One of them, one of those topics is sources and uses. And you hover the bar over that, big window opens up, and um, you can click on U.S. primary energy within that. And, the, and if you do that right, the window should look uh, like this. So here's our chart again. This is where I get it from every every time I need it. Um, in fact, any day now, the 2011 data should be coming up. But um, but there's the 2010 data. And over on the right hand side, um, you can't see in this window, but if you scroll down, there's something called energy graphs. Oh, I'm sorry, before you go to that, read the footnote in that, in, in that, uh, the footnotes that are in that, that are below 
here. See where it says footnotes on the bottom of my window here. Go down, scroll down, read those. And particularly, there's there's some numbered footnotes, and there's one just says note. And and basically, in that note, they describe this primary energy conversion that they use there. But I want you to read that so you know how they um, how they word that. Okay, so uh, go to the uh, annual energy review 2010. So that's um, go to this link. You can find it on that other site, but but um, you'll find it useful. Probably easier to just click from here. And what you'll see are several chapter headings in dark blue. And third from the bottom, something called renewable energy. So click on that. And you can expand it out to all the sub chapters within that chapter. And click on 10.1, the first section within that chapter. And it'll bring us up a table uh, that talks about that looks at renewable energy production from 1949 to 2010. Wonderful history of renewable energy in the country. Um, and read those footnotes as well. Okay, and those footnotes, particularly the ones that, that address solar PV and wind, because they, again, they say the same thing I've been saying, but they say it in the way that they, that they mean. And while you've got that window open, write down the solar PV and wind production numbers for those for the last three years that are shown there, 2008, 2009, 2010. Um, and, and in those footnotes, these seven and eight footnotes, it refers to an appendix that talks about where you'll find the heat rate. I'm not going to tell you what that is. You've got to read it. Pretty easy to do. But then go to that appendix. And, of course, to do that, go you know hit the back button on your browser. Where, so where you click to expand renewable energy, 10, you know, chapter 10, the last one is appendices. Open up appendices. Go to the appendix that is referred to in those footnotes. Again, that's a, that's a big table that goes back to 1949. But write down the fossil fuel approximate heat rate for those three years, 2008, 2009, 2010. And now that you, now you've got these numbers, right? You've got solar PV production for three years, you've got wind production for three years, and you've got heat rate for those three years. So from those um, numbers, um, compute the thermal efficiency of fossil fuel plants. So you've got the heat rate, which is, I think, pretty, you, know, you should be able to pretty easily see that heat rate thermal efficiency is just a quick conversion and one operation, and you've got thermal efficiency. So for your own interest, for our own interest, write those down. Figure out what that overall average was for fossil fuel plants for those three years. And again, from the heat rate numbers, back out what the actual electricity production for solar and PV was for those three years. Uh, and then from the information we have in front of us uh, in this presentation and on your website, look at the percentage of U.S. electricity. And how now we're looking at electric energy, not primary energy. But what percentage of U.S. electricity came from solar and PV? I'm sorry, solar PV and wind in those three years. Um, again, those numbers are there. Uh, you can get to them that way. So that is the end of uh, my presentation. Uh, I hope this worked out real well. Uh, and uh, I'd certainly be looking forward, looking for your feedback on this and hope that uh, it makes sense. So thank you very much.